I see you took care of the guards. I hate those monastic curs. They're not paragons of virtue, true, but they were just doing their job. Then they didn't do it well enough. Can we go now? Yes, let's go. Time to finish it. Whether you like it or not, John Natalis, Tamaria will be divided. For the good of the entire North. The united forces of Kedwin and Redania will end the fighting among the Elder Houses and secure peace from Gorsvelen to Elendor. At present, Tamaria is starting to resemble the Pontar Valley. Which, if I understand correctly, is currently controlled by Edern. You are mistaken, Radovid. Vergen is free. Free? What precisely does that mean? Lormark is not Kedwin's, and Eden no longer controls Upper Eden. We have rejected Prince Stennis. So I heard. And handed King Hensel's army a resounding defeat. Your forces, my dear lass, are nothing but a motley array of rebellious peasants and elven brigands. Sooner or later they will need to swear allegiance to someone, or they will be defeated and dispersed. The peoples of the Pontar Valley will swear allegiance to me, Queen Saskia. As an independent realm, we hereby speak in favor of reconstituting the Council and Conclave. You're a lovely girl, but you wish you from common stock. The sole crown you are worthy of donning is a wreath woven of wildflowers. Redania will recognize no other coronation. In that case, you must choose King Radovid. Will you carve up to Maria? or march on the Pontar Valley. Henselt, last of the line of the unicorns, has sworn to recognize the Pontar Valley as a free realm. Philippa Eilhart witnessed it. Uh, uh, uh. Philippa Eilhart is in my dungeon, awaiting trial for treason. She was in your dungeon, Radovid, but is no longer. She will sit at my side in Vergen as my royal advisor. Everything we did in Vergen will be in vain. There's still hope. We have the dagger. To the matter at hand. The document describing the Charter of the Council and the Conclave is, as previously ascertained, an exact copy of the Charter found in the ruins on Thaned Island. The more important question relates to the Conclave and its power to designate royal advisers. Today, randomly chosen majors and sorceresses reside at many courts. However, in the time of the previous Conclave, such persons were carefully chosen. Why shouldn't we pick our own advisors? These individuals bear great responsibility, Your Majesty. The Conclave needs to be certain they are competent. And that they will keep the Conclave's interests in mind. Obviously, sire. The Conclave's chief interest is the well-being and prosperity of the Northern Kingdoms. The document has been signed by every member of the Conclave we have proposed as well as by all but one of the designated advisers. We await only Sheila de Tanserville's signature. Without our royal seals, you shall be allowed to designate advisers to cowherds at most. That is true, Your Majesty. My kings, before you sign this document, please hear me out. Excellency, with all due respect, this matter does not concern Nilfgaard in the least. I am here at King Henselt's bidding. Will you deny my right to speak? What is the meaning of this? This man tried to kill me this morning. He attempted to take an Imperial envoy's life in your lands. I presume he was interrogated. He confessed. Faltest and Demiven died by his hand. He also revealed the identity of his employers. Sorceresses. They helped me with my assassinations. 
Speak on. The Lodge of Sorceresses sought to remove those rulers who acted against the will of mages. Lodge of Sorceresses? We have compiled a list. Philippa Eilhart, Margarita Loantil, Tris Merigold, Kira Metz, Francesca Finderbear, Ida Amin, and finally, Sheila de Tanzelir. To my deepest regret, two Nilfgaardian sorceresses, Asira Var Anahid and Fringa de Vigo, were also members. The Emperor will deal with them accordingly. Our queen left to powder her nose. Your Majesty, what's the meaning of this? Arrest them all. Your document will have to wait, honorable sorcerers. You have no right. Surrender now if you don't want another massacre, this time in Loch Muin. A court of law will reveal the traitors. You can, Witcher. You can't stop me. Not you, not anyone else. If I have to, I will kill you. How do you like my dragon? Sasantasis! Kill him now! You're late. I've already managed to stabilize the portal. You've got nowhere to run. Sooner or later, somebody will find you. I prefer to leave on my own terms. Where's Letho? Sersenthesis will tend to him, as she will to all the fools who get a hard-on at the mere thought of burning a sorceress at the stake. Where is he? I don't know, fool. I've been looking for him since Foltest's assassination. Letho cheated all of us. We were deceived by his dull face and sluggish stare. Don't you understand? The Lodge sought a way to get rid of Demavend, that's true. He was a weak, volatile king. Edurn would eventually choke to death under his rule. We chose the lesser evil. He had to be eliminated, and Letho happened to be at hand. Voltest? Henselt? We had nothing to do with that. After assassinating Demavend, Letho used our gold and magical support to find and meet Yorveth. The elf was to help him hide until the matter blew over, or so I thought. The Lodge did not condemn Foltest to die. Then who did? Nilfgaard. Letho is the King of Liars and Emperor of Traitors. From the start, he worked for the glory of the Great Sun and the White Flame dancing on the graves of his foes. He lied to everyone. Me, your vet, your stupid little Triss. And you. Got any evidence? A moment ago, I received a message from the Lodge's agent in Sintra. The Imperial Army is on the move. They're fording the Yoruga now. Do you think the North can defend itself in the current situation? And can you count on another miracle at Brenner? I don't know, but you made it all possible and you'll answer for that. 
The stigma of treason is yours for all time. We shall see. For no one will leave this city alive. No one will tell this story. Philippa controls the dragon. As soon as I disappear, it will turn the city into a flaming tomb. We may have lost a battle, but the war is just beginning. You, however, shall not take part in it. This is your end, Witcher. Farewell! Something's not right! The diamond! Someone replace the diamond! This one's flawed! I'll be torn to bits! Geralt, remove it! The diamond! Remove the diamond! I'll give you anything you want! Damn it!
I think we can skip the niceties. Yeah, unnecessary. Yet I sense your readiness to fight on. We were fighting to the death just minutes ago. I understand. I believe I owe you part of my treasure. Family tradition and all. No need. Can you make it back to Vergen? I think so. I've always healed quickly in the past. Can you tell me what'll happen to Jorvith now? Let's be honest. He's a terrorist. I'll not lie about him nor whitewash his deeds. He must earn respect on his own and perhaps, a few generations on, humans will forget. Did you intend just to use him? Geralt, Jorvith has killed more humans than you've eaten chickens. He's not one to be used. It's not that simple. He came to believe in me and knew from the start what we were fighting for. He made a choice. Sure you don't know what I'm talking about? Those baby doe eyes, that intense misty gaze, the pouting? We shared a cause, fought side by side. Jorvith did and would do anything for you. Question is, what are you prepared to do for him? There will always be a place for the Scoia'tael in the free Pontar Valley. As to Jorvith himself, I've heard many say crude things about us. Thing is, as long as I can remember, I found dwarves fascinating. Must be a dragon thing. And though preferable to a human, an elf would be a compromise. Philippa took advantage of the chaos and escaped. Think she could reveal your secret? It's nothing I can control. I don't intend to pursue her. We may or may not meet again, but I shall leave that to fate. She's not one to give up easily. I think she'll come after you again, try to take control, as soon as she's done licking her wounds. I shall be cautious next time, and I know much more about Eilhart than she would ever wish. More than she would wish? Interesting. I obeyed Philippa, but I was not blind. We were close, and Eilhart could not keep all her secrets concealed. I know her weakness, something that can destroy her in an instant. Valuable and dangerous knowledge. Precisely why I'll keep it to myself. You know, you're not the first dragon I've talked to. Hmm. You met my father, villain Trettenmouth, known also as Bork Three Jackdaws. I thought he couldn't have children. He thought so as well. Hmm. Polymorphing. Did you get that from him? Just a hint of it. I can only assume one human form. He could transform into anyone he liked. You also don't have his quickness and reflexes. And I don't think I saw a single golden scale on you. Nor do I have his moustache or paunch. Sorry to disappoint you. Professional curiosity. Forgive me. Where is Bork these days? Who can know that? He taught me what he thought I should know and flew off yonder. It's the dragon's way. And he gave me my name. Sasanthesis, if I heard right. I prefer being Saskia. Sheila and Philippa have lost. The Lodge has been defeated. That's good, though temporary. I fear we shall hear of them again. Mm -hmm. You know Emir's armies have crossed the Yoruga? I expected as much, as did Philippa. We defeated the Adernian Lords and Henselt. With a bit of luck, we'll defeat the Emperor as well. Time I was on my way. You shall always be a welcome guest in Vergen. I underline guest. Don't worry, I'm only ever a visitor. I know. Sometimes I wish I could see the future, like my father. And sometimes it's better to be surprised. Farewell, Witcher.
What happened to Saskia? She's alive. Wounded from our scrap, but alive. She impaled herself on a tree, and then I had to use that dagger. But she'll make it. Mountain air is good for a dragon's hide. You're the most noble human I know, Gwynblade. I'm no human. I'm glad you reminded me. My hatred for the species abated for a moment. What about Letho? Strange thing. He sits in the Temerian's former camp. I believe he awaits you. How do you know? I saw him. He's got Triss. Let's go. Tell me what happened here on the way. While you were fighting Saskia, the city was staged to a bloody spectacle. The players? There were many. At first, it was a hunt for the traitors, but it soon turned into a hunt for all mages. And there were a few skirmishes between Kedweni, Redanian, and Temerian troops. Rape, pillage, and murder. Not necessarily in that order. The pastimes of the Order's pious knights. And the regular troops soon followed suit. The kings, with their choice units, left the city just after the dragon attacked. And the Nilf Guardians? Remained neutral. That is to say, they shot anyone who dared approach their camp. When we're done with you, you'll be a lump of whimpering meat. Elf! Kill the non-human! When the summit ended, we hid in one of the houses, but they found us. They cut off both my sister's hands so she wouldn't cast spells, but I managed to escape. They caught me here. Let's go, Gwynblade. This is madness. Loch Muin has changed. That's what it looks like now. I think I heard something. Imperial troops. Long live the Emperor! Long live the Emperor! There. Then I saw Letho leading Triss out. They let him go? No one dared stop him. I followed him. I think he noticed me, but didn't seem to care. Once the fighting died down, he went to the former Temerian camp. Is Triss all right? Yes. Letho defended her from marauders.
stop, Yorvith. I'm going alone. Why? This is between the two of us. Take care of Triss until I return. Your choice. Mine, indeed. There's one more thing you need to know. Nilfgaard's armies have crossed the Yoruga. War is inevitable. Va fail, Gwynblade. Don't get killed. Farewell, Yorvith. If I don't return within the hour, find Saskia and leave without me. Are you alright? Yes. He saved me from the Nilfgaardians. And defended me from the troops. It's time to end this. Yorvith's waiting. I'll catch up with you soon. Geralt, he knows a lot. I know, Triss. That's why we need to talk. Don't get killed, Witcher. I won't. Took you a while? Is that bobble from Sheila's megascope? Mm-hmm. My final prank. I switched the diamonds. The one in the megascope has a flaw. Minute. But just large enough to warp the teleport. The Emperor's magic theorists assured me the effect would be spectacular. Oh, it was. Good. Had she lived, she would have suffered more intensely and much longer. She helped me quite a bit, through naivety and pride. I would not have gotten far without her. Hmm. So, ready to lay your cards out on the table? No matter the game, there comes a point when all the players need to show their cards. I love that moment. But first... Vodka. I suppose my throat's a little dry? In that case, let's drink to old friendships. <sighs> Recovered your memory yet? Not entirely. Remember how we first met? Yeah, I saved your life. Couldn't think of a nicer way to pay me back? Frankly, I couldn't. I mean, taking care of another man's woman, Yennefer. I can't fathom what you saw in her, but I suppose there's no accounting for taste. The Winter Solstice 1270. Midinvern, the Night of Magic. Letho wasn't lying, the hunt had stopped. At the hanged man's tree, the spectral riders selected from among those they had taken. Yennefer was among them. A wraith cannot be killed, only driven away. Every witcher knows that. Yet the riders fell beneath the blows of our witcher's blades. Crimson blood flowed from under their dead men's armor. We could not kill them all. They were simply too many. A stalemate. He was different from all other elves. There was no shame in his gaze. He had never suffered persecution. He had endured no massacres. Humans had not taken his land. This elf was not of this world. He was an invader. We struck a deal. My soul for that of Yennefer. He agreed without hesitation. Back with me, friend. Got the feeling you left for a minute. Memories. I remember the hanged man's tree and the wild hunt. I remember the exchange. Me for Yennefer. So, cards out on the table. Unless you chase me all that way just to kill me. I chased you for lots of reasons. You owe me some explanations to start with. Let's say I do. Tell me about Yennefer. What happened after I departed? She was feverish for several days. Delirious. In agony. We thought that was it. She was on her way out. Somehow she recovered. But even then she was disoriented. Amnesia like you. What then? 
Well, the woman turned out to be quite a character. Throwing temper tantrums, trying to seduce orcs, trying to drive a wedge between us. After you so nobly sacrificed yourself, we thought it'd be dumb just to leave her somewhere. She wouldn't have survived more than a month. The whims and vigor of a duchess, but she was just a sorceress with no memory. We were in the heart of the Empire. And as I'm sure you know, Geralt, in Nilfgaard, mages who behave like that either drop their bad habits quickly, or are drawn and quartered by horses in the middle of Victory Square. So I heard. So we set out, wandered through the provinces. Everywhere we went, she got in trouble and we pulled her out. And then one day they captured us. The Imperial Secret Police. Me, Ark, Sarit, and Yennefer. Imperial Secret Police? Mm-hmm. We were separated, and they questioned us. Long and thoroughly. But it was uneventful. No violence. That's how I met Vatia de Rideau. And a couple of weeks later, the Emperor himself. Me. A simple witcher. What happened to Yennefer? I don't know. Never saw her again. The Emperor offered me a mission in the Northern Kingdoms. As for Yennefer, I had the feeling she was somehow important to Emir. As I see it, they learned of the Lodge from her. Those Imperial spooks have their ways. All I heard is that Vatier had his men watch Yennefer closely throughout the time she was at the palace. Then we went off to slay the kings of the north. And that's where my knowledge ends. So she's in the Empire? She was when I left. How did you know where we'd find the Wild Hunt? Every Witcher who wears the Viper around his neck knows the place. We had so many books and scrolls about the hunt that I used to think our school was founded for the very purpose of solving the riddle of the Spectral Riders. Know who they are? You know the true identities of the Riders? From what I understand, they're some damn elven race. But they turned out to be a big ruse. The legendary omen of war proved to be a fairground attraction. No Market Square mage could possibly conjure up a cavalcade of wraiths speeding across the sky. Then there's the amnesia. No, there's something more, I assure you. Go ahead, enlighten me. I can tell you want to. There are a lot of legends and myths about it, but the Wild Hunt is a fact. I've fought and killed many of its wraiths. They were spectral emanations, the avatars of real riders. The riders we ran into by the Hanged Man's Tree. Are you telling me you were carried off by elves? Real material sons of bitches like the ordinary kind we deal with in this world? They may be ordinary in their world, but they're strangers in ours. The conjunction of spheres, know the theory. Do you know how monsters appeared in our world? There's not a witcher who doesn't know that. So you know there are other spheres. The most powerful of our mages can open passages between these worlds, and they usually do that to summon the monsters we then have to hunt. The elves we saw come from another world, and they weren't summoned. They found the way on their own. It's not exactly easy, so they usually send their spectral emanations. They come in person on special missions. As they did for you and Yennefer. Mm -hmm. So elves from another world and their trained wraiths. What did they want from you? I've got an idea. But that's not your concern. How did a Witcher agree to kill humans at another human's bidding? At the Emperor's bidding, Geralt. And he's no ordinary human. The rulers of the North come up to about where his Pauline's end. Why? Simple. He promised to rebuild the School of the Viper. The Witcher's Order, where I came to be. Witcher's schools in the south fell into ruin long ago. And Witchers themselves became internal exiles, 
banned from entering most cities. Besides Seret and Ox, I know of two other witches of the School of the Viper who should be alive and on the path. I don't know where they are. Haven't seen them for years. Now they can come out of hiding. They can come home. Why are you still here? Why did you wait for me this time? I knew you wouldn't give up. I knew you'd pursue me. And I don't aim to hide anymore. Fact is, only you know the truth about me. Well, and a couple of folks whose word isn't worth spit anymore. I never saw you as a foe. I want to go my way. But if I have to fight you first, so be it. The story ends here and now. Care to tell me what it was all about? Hmm. Kill as many rulers as we could. Lay the blame on the sorceresses. Breed chaos. Prepare the north. Soften it before the invasion. And you know what's incredible? We could not have imagined more fertile soil. No matter what the war's outcome. The Northern Monarchs will accuse one another. Pursue their God-given rights. Seek vengeance and be at each other's throats for years to come. The North resembles a whorehouse on fire. As your friend Dandelion would say. Care to tell me what... No, the... No, the... How did you manage to contact Sheila? It wasn't a problem once I learned of the Lodge's existence. Initially, she watched my every move. But sooner or later, everyone starts treating me like a big oaf. I mean, I can't change how I look. I stayed close to Sheila, killed a few beasts for her whined about how unhappy I was, how unfair the world was. So much, in fact, that I actually got her gander up a few times. I made sure a few potentially trustworthy witnesses saw us together, could link us. Security in case I was captured. I also prepared to assassinate the King of Kavir. Esterad Tyson was to be the first victim of the mysterious assassins. But before I could do the dirty deed, Sheila asked me to slay Demavend. The gods had smiled upon me. I couldn't believe my luck. Here I'd been trying to figure out how to frame Sheila, and now all I needed was to carry out her orders and follow through. Where'd you get your information about the Lodge? From the Emperor and Vatir de Rideau, the Emperor's chief spy. And I believe they got it out of Yennefer. She recovered her memory? Nah. I'd never claim she informed on her friends consciously. I expect they found a way to tap into her memory in spite of her amnesia, and without her knowing it. There was a sorcerer present when I was questioned. A young, proud intelligence officer. Whatever the case, they gave me a list of the sorceresses in the Lodge. Only Emir, Vatir, and I were present. Only we knew of the mission. How do you manage to slay Demavend? Sheila's magic. I mean, she could give us the King's every move. His habits, the positions of the palace guards, anything. All we had to do was navigate the labyrinth and land the final blow. Besides, she had plenty of gold for the preparations. Greased palms abundantly. It had all the makings of a cakewalk. But it's never that easy. We barely avoided our pursuers. And we wouldn't have if not for Yarveth Skyatel. Another of Sheila's ideas. 
With your vessels, not only did we cut down Demavand, but traveling with them put us out of the Lodge's reach. We could calmly plan fall tests and Hensel's assassinations. How did you know Foltest would come to the Monastery's solar? Yorveth and I planned Foltest's murder. The King of Temeria would have to deal with the Lavalette sooner or later, and he made no secret of it. I was sure he'd want to recover his bastard children in the process. And where do they take the children when a castle's under siege? I had to become a monk, but I couldn't just arrive at the Monastery and claim I'd seen the light. Not very believable. So one of Arion's patrols out in the forests happened on a Skyatel unit torturing a helpless monk. Arion's brave men drove off the elves and I found shelter in the monastery. No one noticed you had no wounds? I paid the monk who treated me a lot of orange to stay silent. Actually, it was only a loan, because I killed him later. Only the dead can keep a secret. Then all I had to do was wait for the situation to develop. When I saw you enter the chamber with Faltes, I thought I might fail. Luckily, you failed. To recognize an old friend. When did you decide to get rid of Yorveth? As soon as I realized I couldn't manipulate him. A true fox, that one. He was so observant, so dangerous. I got the sense he might see through me at any moment. You made a mistake. You were untouchable as long as the Scoyatel were protecting you. Maybe, but with Yorveth, my hands were tied. If I'd finished off Kieran... But you didn't. And that allowed me to drive a wedge between you and Yorveth. I forced you to flee. And I let you live. You know I could have killed you. You're forgetting. No, I remember. So Sheila was looking for you when she came to Flotsam? Mm-hmm. She thought she was still in control and wanted to get rid of me. I'd bet my eyes that she thought I'd lost my mind, or that Yorveth was manipulating me. And the North descended deeper into chaos. Exactly. There was just one problem. You. I could have killed you in the Elven Ruins. Thing is, you weren't really my enemy. You screwed up with Henselt. Sabrina's curse tore that down. First off, we got holed up in that hideout in the ravines. Then Sheila showed up and started watching Henselt like he was her own ass. By that time, his death was no longer necessary. Fate had smiled upon us again. I learned of the summit and the efforts to reconstitute the Council and Conclave. The ideal setting for the mission's grand finale. I'm done talking. Let's finish this. Want to fight? Any vodka left in that bottle? A swig apiece. Here. The Imperial Army is probably crossing the Yoruga as we speak. Pure pandemonium will ensue. The North's finished. Time to go south, where the good life awaits. You're a fool, Metho. Both you and your Emperor are forgetting one thing. Misfortune brings people together. Very shortly, the North could be united like never before, thanks to you. But that's just not my concern anymore. I'm not your foe. I never was. Let me walk away and I will. You'll never see me again. Force me to fight, and this time I'll kill you. I've learned all I wanted to know. I can feel the memories coming back. Your death won't change a thing. Go where you will. Just like that. No threats. No words of wisdom. Are you going or not? <sighs> Farewell, Geralt.
The Witcher had traveled far and wide in search of the Kingslayers. Along the way, he had met both the Righteous and Scoundrels, Bernard Lurido amongst the latter. Lurido sold Flotsam to Kedwin and scattered the local non-humans to the Four Winds. Flotsam became a military base. Its civilian population was resettled. In Edern, the Witcher witnessed Saskia the Dragonslayer achieve a great victory. The Pontar Valley, previously Upper Edern, became a promised land for outcasts who dared dream of freedom. Even sly old Zoltan Chive came to believe in this land of bliss. Yet dark times approached for the architects of the New Order. Dark clouds had been gathering over Temeria since Foltest's death. Stripped of its king, the land was like a rich cloth which nobles began to shred. These minor scavengers, however, scurried off in fear when true predators reached out for their prize. The summit at Loch Muin sealed the fate of Foltest's realm, when Radovid of Redania and Henselt of Kedwin divided it between them. A tempest descended on the north, at least partly the work of manipulative mages. It seemed the turmoil in Temeria, Edern, and Kedwin would benefit them most. Common folk turned against sorceresses and all magic freaks, witchers included. Castles that had hitherto welcomed mavens of the magic arts now shut their gates to any who sought shelter there. A witch hunt ensued. It was a time of great uncertainty, of rape accomplished by royal decree. Yet as troubled as the day seemed, we, who had in some way shaped the world's fate, finally received some respite. Zoltan resumed the quest for his beloved's hand, and I laid my head in the laps of the muses. Who could have known this tempest which had ravaged the north was but a harbinger of darker days, and the preamble to an entirely new tale of Geralt of Rivia? <laughs>